Okay, so one of the things that I get a lot of questions about are the types of altitude, uh, pressure altitude, density altitude, true altitude, absolute altitude, and so on. And the types of altitude are important to understand for a variety of reasons. Uh, first of all, uh, students will face questions about the types of altitude on the written exam, uh, which is their knowledge exam, the FA administrative uh, knowledge exam. Uh, also, you uh, have potential of being asked to these types of questions uh, in your oral for your check ride or your practical test, and more importantly, just because these are the types of things that you want to know during your day-to-day -day operations as a pilot, uh, because uh, these different types of altitude can affect aircraft performance. Uh, they're important to understand for terrain and obstruction clearance and airspace and other reasons. So we're going to go over these sequentially here. Okay, so we're going to start with a discussion of true altitude first here. And true altitude is better known to pilots as MSL or mean sea level. So I'm going to draw a rudimentary picture here. <clears throat> Get my pen working. This would be the water here. This would be ocean. This would be a cliff or a hill that's coming out of the ocean. So this would represent sea level here. And then we have some terrain that uh, turns into a hill here. And when we're looking at MSL altitude, I'm going to draw a little airplane up here. Airplane's flying this way. We're looking at the distance between sea level and the airplane. Okay, so in this case, let's say this is 3,000 feet MSL. We'll just slap some numbers on here. We would be at uh, 3,000 feet true altitude. That's our height above sea level. MSL stands for mean sea level. So when you average out the tides, <clears throat> We uh, measure our height above the average of the mean sea level, and that's what we would call MSL. The uh, technically correct term for that is true altitude. So in this case, if we're 3,000 feet above the uh, ocean here, the, the sea level would be a 3,000 feet MSL. Okay, so let's look at uh, pressure altitude next. And pressure altitude is confusing for a lot of pilots because they, they hear the book definition. They don't necessarily apply it and correlate it to higher level learning which is what I'm going to try to do with you here today. So pressure altitude, and you may have heard the definition, is uh, the height above the standard datum plane, the airplane's height above the standard datum plane. And the standard datum plane is the height in the atmosphere, uh, or excuse me, the level in the atmosphere where standard atmospheric pressure exists at sea level, meaning the uh, standard atmospheric pressure at sea level is 29.92 inches of mercury. So if we have a standard day down here at sea level, the pressure down here would be 29.92 inches of mercury. Uh, it's very rarely a standard day. We don't normally have a standard atmosphere because we have highs and lows and fronts that come through and they disrupt the pressure and they make it deviate from standard a little bit. Okay, so in this case, let's say that uh, the current uh, sea level pressure on this day down here is 30.12 inches of mercury. All right, so now with, with the sea level being at 30.12 inches of mercury, if we want to determine our, our, our pressure altitude, we want to know our height above not the sea level pressure, but the height above the standard datum plane. So if we could strap on a jet pack, let's say hypothetically, and rise up in the atmosphere to where 29.92 inches of mercury existed, if we had a barometer in our hand and we were carrying that with us, and we found it, let's say somewhere right about here, this would be the level that 29.92 inches of mercury would exist. So I'm going to write 29.92 inches of mercury. HG is the periodic symbol for mercury. And in this case, since we have higher than standard pressure, say we had a high pressure system come through here, the uh, sea level pressure is higher than standard at 30.12 inches of mercury. We know that the pressure falls, the pressure decreases with altitude. So as we climb up, the pressure decreases, which means that we would find this level of 29.92 inches of mercury somewhere above the higher 30.12 inches of mercury that's down here at sea level. So I've just drawn a you know rough estimation of where that level might be. This is a little exaggerated, not to scale. Of course, it wouldn't actually be this large of a difference between sea level and uh, our standard data plan on this particular day, but just so you understand the idea, I've drawn it up here. Okay, so uh, what we can do is figure out the difference in height between our sea level pressure and the standard data plan by doing a little math. So if we just take the difference between the current sea level pressure, which on this day is 30.12, and subtract that from the standard sea level pressure, which again is 29.92, we get uh, 0.2 inches of mercury here, or two tenths. And we know that the standard lapse rate for pressure as we climb in the atmosphere, if we take a barometer up as we climb in the atmosphere, the pressure falls one inch of mercury per thousand feet of altitude gained. So we don't have one inch of mercury here, but we do have two tenths of an inch. So if we multiply that times a thousand, in this case, we get 200 feet. 200 feet. So that tells us that on this particular day, in this example here, the difference between our 
sea level pressure and the standard datum plane, which again, is just a level in the atmosphere where standard pressure exists, is 200 feet. So the difference between these two levels is 200 feet. So in, in this case, if I want to determine what my pressure altitude is, I want to determine how high my airplane is above the standard datum plane, all I would need to do is now if I'm measuring from the airplane down to this level, the standard datum plane, instead of all the way down to sea level, all I have to do, as you can see here, is subtract off this 200 feet from my true altitude. So 3,000 MSL minus the 200 foot difference would mean my pressure altitude is 2,800 feet on this particular day. So that would be our pressure altitude. And that's good news because what that tells me is that my airplane is going to be performing a little bit better than standard because the airplane feels, strictly from a pressure standpoint, like it's flying at an altitude of 2,800 feet above sea level when actually it's 3,000 feet above sea level. So at high pressure means that we have more air molecules acting on the airplane and we get a little bit better aerodynamic performance. Okay, so that's a good thing. We like that. So if we take our pressure altitude one step further and correct non-standard pressure, which we have here at sea level on this day, for also non-standard temperature, we'll get density altitude. And density altitude is better known as performance altitude. It's the true performance altitude. Okay, so let's just slap some numbers on here. So the standard temperature at sea level is 15 degrees Celsius. And let's say on this particular day, since we have a high pressure system in here, let's say it's a little bit colder than standard. So maybe it's, uh, oh, I don't know, maybe it's 12 degrees C down here at sea level on this particular day. Okay, so now there's no uh, arithmetic we're going to apply here, but what we uh, would do ordinarily is apply this uh, uh, pressure altitude here. We would apply this temperature to it, this non-standard temperature on a chart, on a performance chart, and then we could determine what our density altitude was. And in this particular case, since it's colder than standard, and we'll just, I'm just going to make up a theoretical number here <clears throat> uh, since I don't have the chart in front of me, and you, that'll be covered later on in training. Uh, but let's say since it is colder than the standard, we know the air is a little bit more dense than standard. We like cold air, it's more dense. So again, we get better performance in that air because there's more air for the airplane or aerodynamic forces. So in this particular case, this uh, colder than standard temperature will actually further decrease our pressure altitude. And let's say it decreases our pressure altitude by, I'm just gonna say a couple hundred feet. Okay, so let's say that after looking at the chart, consulting the chart, we determined that our density altitude on this particular day is 2,600 feet. That's our true performance altitude, 2,600 feet. So, so when we factor in the non-standard pressure and the non-standard temperature at sea level, and if these, if these uh, values down here, the pressure and the temperature are true at sea level, they're also more than likely relatively uniform and true through the remainder of the atmosphere as we go up to a point. Okay, so we're assuming that if it's higher pressure at, the, at sea level and colder than standard at sea, level, at sea level, it's also higher pressure and colder than standard up here where we're flying in the atmosphere at about 3,000 feet MSL. Okay, so in this particular day, the airplane feels, truly feels, when we factor in non-standard pressure and temperature, like it's flying at 2,600 feet above sea level, even though it's actually flying at 3,000 feet above sea level. So we're getting better performance than we should at this altitude, so those are good things. So non-standard pressure and temperature, in this case, higher than standard pressure and temperature equate to a lower density altitude. And with lower density altitude means the air is actually more dense and we have higher pressure. So we get better aerodynamics. That's a good thing. So low density altitude is a good thing. High density altitude is a bad thing. That means your performance is gonna take a hit. In some cases, a very, very large hit. Okay, so moving on to the next types of altitude, I'm gonna continue our flight here in our airplane. And let's say that we come across, now we're over the terrain over here. And if we measure the distance between the airplane and the terrain, and I'm just again gonna slap a number on here. Let's say this is about maybe 2000 feet. We call that AGL. AGL stands for above ground level. Now the technically correct term for this is absolute altitude. So absolute altitude is the airplane's true height as measured in feet above the terrain that it's flying over, okay? So in this case we're flying, and that's more commonly referred to as AGL by pilots or above ground level. The technically correct term is absolute altitude. So in this case we're flying a 2000 feet AGL. 
And all these altitudes can be true at once, you see. So we're flying at 3,000 feet MSL above sea level. That theoretical sea level value continues beneath the land here, of course. We're also flying at 2,000 feet AGL above the ground level at the same time. Our pressure altitude is 2,800 feet and our density altitude is 2,600 feet. So these are all true at once. So they all have their various uh, applications. And let's look at those briefly here. So we use MSL altitude when we're determining our height above sea level so that we can uh, separate ourselves from things like airspace, that we have different types of airspace, class D and B and C, or even class A airspace for uh, higher performance airplanes that can climb a little higher. And all of those uh, airspace dimensions are depicted in altitudes and uh, height above MSL or mean sea level. And this is the number here that we read off of the altimeter, our indicated altitude is what we read off the altimeter. And if we have the altimeter set correctly to the day's current sea level pressure, uh, we're gonna be reading true altitude off of our altimeter, MSL altitude off the altimeter. So we use that for airspace uh, separation, also for VFR cruising altitude or IFR cruising altitude rules. We always use MSL for those, and then air traffic control will assign altitudes in MSL as well. Um, in terms of AGL altitude, that has a very obvious application because we, a pilot should always know at least approximately what AGL altitude they're operating at uh, roughly so that, uh, of course, we can separate ourselves from the terrain and the obstructions and the, the hard stuff on the ground that can hurt us. That would be the application for AGL. Our pressure altitude is really just kind of a stepping stone that gets us to our density altitude, which we use for performance calculations, takeoff and landing distance calculations, climb performance, and then cruise performance, fuel burn, and so on. Uh, we use all of the uh, performance charts on the airplane are based on density altitude. In fact, a lot of pilots don't realize, but in section five, which is performance in any pilot's operating handbook, uh, one of the first things that you do on a performance chart is the chart will have you plug in your pressure altitude and then it will ask you for your outside air temperature. So really what the chart is doing for you, whether you're aware of it or not, is it's taking your pressure altitude, which you would have had to calculate before and bring to the chart, and it's correcting that pressure altitude for non-standard temperature. And then of course, uh, you're getting density altitude that you carry forward and use for your uh, calculations, for your performance calculations on that chart. Okay, so that gives you a brief overview of the types of altitude. Uh, there are a couple other types, calibrated altitude. I, mi I mentioned indicated altitude briefly. Those are fairly simple to understand. Those are for, uh, to be filled out in future lessons. But uh, the, the, in my experience, at least, the two types of altitude that people have the most issues with are the density altitude, the pressure altitude, in terms of how to calculate those, what they mean to us, why they're important, and their applications, and that sort of thing. So uh, anyway, hope that helps. I uh, hope to see you back for future instruction, and uh, safe flying.